Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from ExecuteAutomation.com. This is part 10 of our Coded UI video series. So in this part, we are going to discuss about Coded UI hand coding. So, so far from part 1 through part 9, we were just doing a record and playback of the code. So we were using Coded UI test builder to record the code from the application's UI and then we just ran the test and it was executing the test that was great but so what is the actual advantage and disadvantage of recording the code in code or device test builder so you know that obviously if you followed this video we cannot change any of the code in uimap.designer.cs so if we make any changes in the code then the next time if you record any code then the whole changes in the code in the code or UI UI map will be deleted so that was one of the greatest pain in the butt and then the next problem is it's a lot of code if you remember the coded ui ui map.designer.cs file will have a lot of codes surely maintaining the code is really a hardest part and of course if your code is growing bigger your memory consumption with visual studio alone is going to be very large so that's going to be a really pain option so, so that's why hand coding is a very important option and very useful option that Microsoft has given for us. So Microsoft has given all the APIs and library for us to do a hand coding of the Visual Studio test that you can do the same options in the recording of the code. So how to do the coding of the code UI test instead of recording the code. So before jumping into that, first let's understand the controls hierarchy so we have already discussed about controls hierarchy in part 8 so if you could recollect that we can know that for each and every controls let's say for a windows control we will have the let's say it's a win edit so as you can see here for win edit we will have a base class as win control and similarly for the win control the base class is ui test control right so all the windows control has a base class of win control so this is the hierarchy right for html control the base class is html control so if you have html edit or html radio then it's going to be a i'm sorry it should be html control it should not be web control here so it should be web html control so it should have a html control base class similarly for the wpf control the base class is going to be wpf controls right but for all the controls, the most common base class is UI test control. We can also call these controls by instantiating its type to UI test control. So we will discuss about UI test control in greater detail in upcoming videos of this video series. But as of now, I just want to demonstrate how we can write a custom class instead of relying on UI map. So in this part, we are going to create a custom class by copy pasting some of the code from the uimap.designer.cs file and then we are going to create a hand coded class file so that we can use that one instead of relying on the UI map itself. So let's flip back to Visual Studio. So this is the same project which we have been working for a pretty long time as of now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dissect all the codes from the uimap.designer.cs to my own custom class. As I already told, if you could recollect, all the controls have the hierarchy like UI test, let's say this button con control 8 sits under UI item window and this UI item window sits under UI calculator window and this UI calculator window actually comes from the UI map class. So these are all nothing but the class and this is a property as we already discussed right so let's go and see the code once again so let's first start with the UI calculator window class so if I go back here the easy way to go here is just go to this uh, addition operation method so you have this UI calculator window so if you go to definition there it will bring you directly to this property and within this property you can again navigate to the class so you can see that this is the class and it has the search properties 
So as you can see, basically this UI calculator window is a class, right? So this is system generated. The only drawback we have is if we change anything in the UI map .cs file, everything is gone. So why don't we create a separate class and then from there we access them. So if you could take a deep look into this code, you can understand that this class UI calculator window is extending the win window class and it has a constructor which has some of the search property which enables this window to be identified right other than that it has a title bar which we're not very much interested in and there are a lot of properties for each and every ua item window controls which is actually created as a class in the same class so if you go to the definition it will take you to that particular class so each and every ua item window class will have a control so here it has a result win text right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to first create a custom class for the ui calculator window so let's go to that particular class so i'm not going to write any code here i'm just going to copy paste basically so so this is the ui calculator window so i'm going to just copy this code so I'm not very much interested in any of these codes. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to add a class here. And uh, let's name this as custom UI calci.cs. Right? So I'm going to paste it right here. So okay, so since this is a class, you cannot put it right here. So I'm going to just delete some lines there. And and then this should extend from win window so this reference will not be added so i'm going to add this all right and the constructors is wrong so i'm going to just copy this class name and put it right here so i have created a custom ua calculator window here and it has the search property to identify great so the next quest for us is to create the custom class of ua item window Right, and within that we need to have this particular button property. So here we are just going to click button 8. That's it. So in this code, we're just going to click button 8, right? Not other buttons it's like button 9 or but add button or button 2 or etc. Right? So the next thing is let's go to the UI map designer.cs. So as I said. I'm going to click this button 8 so let's go to the definition so this button is actually sitting inside this particular UI item window so why don't let's copy this code up to here because this class ends here and then create a custom class so let's call this as custom UI item window dot CS right and then let's let's paste it right here so, so that this is, should be a easy fix so i'm going to delete this one all right and then let's add the reference and ui test control is missing so i'm going to add this reference and since the constructor name is missing so we need to probably add this constructor correctly all right that's it so all the errors are gone and we have the custom ua item window which is extending win window and it has the search property to identify this particular window and also it has the property of button 8 so this will identify this control button 8 here right great so i'm not going to discuss any of this code right here so this code is just a copy paste code so we'll deep dive into more so these codes will never come right all right so that's it so we have created the custom ui item window custom ui calculator window here the next thing is we need to create a custom class which will call the controls as the ui map cs file has so it has a method which call all these controls like this so for that I'm going to create one more class file let's call this as custom class or custom caller 
dot cs oh i think i put c there hmm let's rename this a little bit rename this to cs all right great so i'm gonna make this as public great so as you already know the relationships which we discussed even the search and filter properties uh, video of this video series so first i need to create the instance for the calculator window so create the instance for calci window so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to call this custom ui calculator window calci window is equal to new custom calci window amazing right the next thing is we need to click the button eight so for that i need to create the instance for this ua item window this custom ui item window right so instance for custom ua item window great for that custom ui item window can see or uh, maybe cust item wind is equal to all right and then there's going to be an error so what is this error it says the constructor take cannot take zero arguments that's true because it finds the control using its parent so who is his parent so the parent of this guy is nothing but our calculator window so we need to somehow pass this if you can see the parameter there it's actually accepting Microsoft Visual Studio testing to dot UI testing dot UI test control so since this guy returns the UI test control to us I can simply pass this so this guy is actually of type UI test control so if you go back to this class you can see it's of win window so win window is actually of type UI test control remember all those search and filter properties we discussed about the hierarchy of the controls just read like that the same thing is what I'm discussing here great hmm what does it say oh I am so sorry see how stupid mistakes I'm doing I should probably call this within a method so let me put it right here public static void uh, button 8 click so if I put it like this so I can just put this way and we can probably call this guy within in this method all right so this error is gone and then we need to click the button 8 right so by clicking that we need to use mouse dot click so the mouse class is obviously missing so we gotta call this guy and the click will have a capital C so that's the problem and then within the cust item window we have this UI item 8 button so I'm gonna call this guy so this should click the 8 button in the window so can you see the number of codes we have reduced it's just three lines of code but the next question is how are we just identifying all these controls so it's again a lot of codes there right here and here but still it's more pleasing than these many number of lines of course it's still 564 lines of code so comparing to that this is less so but let's try to run this and see if this really works or not so I'm going to go to this code UI test CS uh, and I'm going to comment this out so it's control EC and uh, I'm going to call this custom color dot button 8 click method so this guy will click the button 8 in my application so let's run this test and see if this really works so it should open the calculator did you see that it clicked button 8 there so let me pass maybe put a breakpoint there and if I debug this test you can see it even more clearly so the engine is just getting ready for debugging it's loading all the symbols that's great and it should open the calculator by now okay and it clicked button 8 did you see that amazing so 
that's how we can re-engineer our uimap.designer.cs file by creating two custom classes and one custom caller class to perform the same operation what uimap.designer.cs does. But again, there are a lot of problems here since for each and every window, we cannot keep on creating classes like this, right? And what if there are a lot of different hierarchies for a single application? So keeping, keep on creating these kinds of custom classes will surely create a problem in future. So how to come out of all these problems? We are going to discuss them in next video of this video series. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.